Grant Tinker first came to national attention with programs that were a delight to the viewers without being an insult to their intelligence. From the program named after his former wife, Mary Tyler Moore, to others such as the Bob Newhart Show, Lou Grant, and Rhoda. Then, as president of NBC, he presided over that network's amazing comeback series of similarly admired hits, gaining a reputation as a man with a golden eye. Of late, though, in independent production, the eye seems to have tarnished. TV 101 was one of three primetime series from his new GTG Entertainment Company this past season, and all three have been canceled. Grant Tinker joins us tonight from his company's studios just outside Hollywood. Grant, Pat Weaver just told us that in his judgment, commercial television has not just neglected an elite, but that it has neglected the needs and tastes of a good one-third of Americans. Do you agree with that? I, I don't know about the one-third part. I, I do think that we have uh, disappointed ourselves and obviously the audience. I, I usually agree with Pat on, on most things. I, I disagree with him as to the reason. I think that the, it does largely, the programming that is, work back from what the audience will accept. And we all know we live by ratings and size of audience, et cetera, in commercial television. And so I, I, I think the audience has to share the blame uh, for, for what we program and what it gets. A friend of mine who was a, has been a longtime television executive maintains that commercial television has to operate under what he calls Gresham's Law. Bad programming drives out good programming. Most people want to watch trash. Do you agree with that? Well, to some extent I do, I, uh, what, uh, and I also agree with Pat that we have sort of abdicated uh, what could have been our television and given too much of it over to what he called the studios. I think of it as too much fiction and too little fact, and, and I think he and I should be comforted by, by the future in that regard. Uh, I don't really understand the hardware of television, and I certainly can't look ahead to, to what it will become. But it's obvious that television is, is now so pervasive, can go anywhere, bring back anything, that I think we will now redress the balance to have less fiction and, and, and more fact in, in, uh, and that we'll be, be bringing the world, in effect, into, into uh, everyone's living rooms. And to that extent, we will be driving out perhaps some of the witless and forgettable fiction. What do you think television does best today? Just that. I, I think that uh, those things that Pat said he watches are the things that I watch, the reality television. Uh, that does not mean that some fiction, some, some of the, that stuff we prepare just for entertainment isn't good. Some of it indeed is, but not enough is because the, the appetite is too great. So uh, I, I look to, to re reality television for, for, for what it does best, and I think it'll only get better. Well, we sometimes on this program have to listen to fiction, so the two do get mixed a lot. What do you think television does worse today? Well, probably because of the, 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 the relentless appetite of, of the medium, as that I just referred to, uh, in, in feeding the, the machine, we, we just, we, there, there is too much uh, dross. There's just too much that's, that's really awful or next to awful that, uh, that we won't be feeding in in the future, perhaps. Uh, certainly not in a broadcasting sense. Your perspective is unique because you're not on some ivory tower. You produced sitcoms that had merit, and you produced a number of programs that had a great deal of appeal. Did you, when you were producing those programs, think in terms of quality or terms of audience, or did you think the two were not exclusive? I don't think they're exclusive. I, I thought in terms of good creative people and recruited as many as I could get my hands on, and they in turn did the, the programs that you so kindly commented on. Uh, I think if you get those good people, they do tend to do better work. Uh, there are only so many of them, unfortunately. You were amazingly successful at MTM and at NBC. You've been somewhat less successful on your own. Three primetime programs all canceled. If even Grant Tinker can't figure out what the American audience wants, where are we heading? Well, uh, three, three for three was a bad average this year, Lou. I, I'm not thrilled that you brought it up by the way but uh, we're, we're not ready to give up yet and, and we'll be back and I think we will do some right and we will figure out what the audience wants or what it will accept is there some structural change in television that makes it harder for quality program to succeed no I don't no I don't think so 
I, I think maybe as the networks shrink and, uh, and, and some of that will continue, uh, but perhaps we'll, there, there'll be more difficulty. And as they can pay less for the programs, which, as you know, is what they want to do as that audience does shrink, uh, th there are some practical difficulties to overcome. But I think good work will out. Uh, I, I'm confident that it will. All three networks, as you know so well, are under new ownership in recent years. Is there greater attention to the profit motive than a few years ago? Yeah, no question. And, and sadly, I think. I, I don't think anyone should go to jail for it. But I do think that the broadcasters, Pat Weaver would be a, a perfect example. People who grew up in broadcasting were willing to put something back in through the news divisions or however to, to spill a little, as I, as I have sometimes called it, uh, to make that contribution in return for the unique franchise that, that we were given to work with. The network's share of the total audience is now down to about 67 percent. Is this part of a long-term decline, or do you think it's bottomed out? No, I don't think it's quite bottomed out. I think there probably is a, a level to, below which it won't sink. But that doesn't mean that all of the new players we now have, and still others to come, won't be t taking their share of audience. And that's all to the, to the good, I think. The, the more players, the better in the audience, in audience terms. You've said that you can't guess about the technology of the future. What do you think of the programming in the next 10 years? In the next 10 years, I think it won't, it won't change dramatically. Uh, more reality, as I've said, maybe a little less fiction. But as you get on into the next century, uh, it almost could worry you. You could, you could never go out of your house. Uh, you could do everything by television or, or, or a cousin of television. That worries me. I think there are sociological implications that I'm not qualified to, uh, to, to anticipate or, or make judgments about, but that are the, the really w interesting questions about w where television will take us. Grant, the great philosophers of a generation ago, E.B. White, Edward R. Murrow, some others, thought that television could be the great educational instrument of our times. Were they over-optimistic? I think so. Yeah, I think uh, there's a superficiality to it and a kind of a, a Muzak aspect that, uh, that to which we don't attend as we don't attend to Muzak that made that, uh, that prognostication uh, not valid. Van Tinker, thanks, and I hope you'll continue to bring Metropolitan Opera to Muzak along the way. Thank you, Lou.